This video is all about combining like terms. You want to make sure you have the right materials and you're going to need your spiral notebook and pencil. Highlighters and colored pencils, some people like to use them for this activity, some people prefer just to use shapes. That's totally up to you. If you want to wait and see what it's all about and then decide later on if you want the different colors, you're welcome to do that too. It's really an optional type item. But make sure you have your spiral notebook and pencil. These are the vocabulary words you're going to need for this particular lesson. So what you're going to need to do is in your spiral notebook, go to the next page and at the very top write combining like terms. That's going to be your title for this unit. Underneath that title, you need to make sure you record the vocabulary words. Vocabulary words are very, very important to make sure you understand you're going to hear me using them, and hopefully you're going to be using them when you come to class. Constant, make sure you write down the definition. Variable, expression, and equation. A constant is really just a number in a math problem, just a simple number. A variable is a letter. And an expression is a math problem without an equal sign. You see these all the time. You just might not know that those are called expressions. An example would be 5 plus 3, or a plus 4, or 5a. And then you have an equation. An equation is a math problem with an equal sign. You've been seeing those for quite some time now. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to so you can get caught up on the vocabulary words, and then come on back and we'll continue on. All right, like terms. Like terms have the exact same variables. Make sure you write that down. Like terms have the same exact variables. Exactly the same. Here are some examples. You've got 2a, 3a, and a. They all have an a, so they are like terms. Notice this one doesn't have a number. That doesn't matter. Do you know what the missing number is? Whenever you don't see a number, if it's missing, there's really a 1 kind of hanging out in front, and I'm going to put that in a different color. There's a 1 here. It's kind of hiding. It's implied. If you have an apple, that means you have one apple. Well, I have an A, so that means I have one A. All right, here, see how all of these have an X and a Y? They are like terms because they both, all, I'm sorry, all the terms have two variables, one X and one Y. That's really important. They have the exact same variables. And now here you have three more terms. Notice the variables here, X squared, X squared, X squared. They all have x squared, so they are the exact same type of term. They are like terms. Now, if you had a 4x on the end, that would not be a like term because it's not x squared. It has to be exactly the same. Okay? All right, here is a list of terms. I want you to take these lists, this list and I want you to divide it up into y terms, x terms, B terms, and constants. Go ahead and pause the video, try this out on your own, and then come on back and I'll go over it with you. All right, how did you do? Hopefully, you, as you went along, you crossed them off or you just checked yourself to make sure you had the right number because it's very easy to forget one. Here you have 3x. It has an x as its variable, so that would be an x term. 4b. 7, no variable, so that's called a constant. 6, 10b, 9y, just plain old b. If I have a b, that means I have 1b. I'm going to put a 1 here to show you that it doesn't matter if you have a plain b or a 1b. They mean exactly the same. 5x, x, 3, 2b, y, 5, 6y, and 4x. How'd you do? If you need more help, make sure you ask for more clarification during class, and I'll see if I can help you out. This is really, really important that you write down and put a big star next to. You must keep the, the positive or negative sign that's in front of the term with it. When you're moving things around, it's real important to keep track of those signs. That can make a huge difference. We're going to do this one together. So go ahead and jot down this example, and let's work it out together. 
Here's where you can use your highlighters or your colored pencils if you're choosing to do that. Or you can use your regular pencil and make shapes. So for instance, if I look across this e equation, notice the equal sign, if I look across this equation, I'm going to put a box around each one of these terms. Some people like to color them in. I'm going to put a box around 3 plus, 3x. There is no symbol in front of the 3x. However, there is. What kind of 3 is that? If I just said plain old 3, that's a positive 3, right? So really, there is a positive in front, if it helps you. This plus goes with the 9, so I'm going to put a box around that one. This plus goes with the 2x. Do you see how I'm keeping the sign in front with the term? This subtraction sign goes with the 8. This is really a negative 8. We've got a 5. There's no symbol in front. Kind of there is. It's a positive, right? And then the 1 has the subtraction sign. Do you see how the sign in front goes with each term? Go ahead and jot this one down and see if you can do it on your own. Put a box around or color it. Some people like to put shapes. Go ahead and section off and put each term with its correct symbol. All right, let's check and see how you did. Hopefully, you've got positive 12, positive 2, negative 8y. Notice I'm keeping the y with the 8. This is the complete term is 4y, not just the 4, but 4y, and it's a positive 4y. This is going to become really important for the next examples that we're going to do where we're actually going to put together those like terms. Symbol in front goes with the term. All right, now let's try the hard ones. We're going to do some together, and then you're going to do some on your own, okay? All right, jot this example down. We're going to put together all the like terms. Now, it might be helpful for you first to put a box around each number, having the symbol staying with the term. So I'm going to put, I've got an x here, and that x goes with this x, which is a plus 5x. Notice I'm keeping the sign with it. They're both x's. I've got one more x down here, and it has a subtraction sign in front of it. Okay. Now, if you want to change colors, or you can change shapes, I'll do both, just so you have it. This is a constant. This is a constant. I'm going to put a circle now. This one, whoops, goes with this one. So we've got a plus 7 and a minus 4. So I'm going to put together those terms. Alright, so I'm going to put together all my blue boxes. I've got a positive 2x, a positive 5x, so 2, if I have 2x's, and I have 5 more x's, at 7x's, minus an x, remember this is a 1, there's a 1 here, minus 1, if it helps I can put a 1 here. Alright, so 2 plus 5, 7, minus 1, 6x. All right, and then I'm going to do my constants. I have a plus 7, minus 4. Plus 7, minus 4 is 3. There's my answer. All right, try another one. Jot this down, and let's do it together. All right, I'm going to put my boxes around. This is an x squared. Do I have any more x squareds? Nope, that's the only one. All right, now I'm going to look for all my x values. All right, this one, it's a plus 5x and a plus 6x. All right, and then I've got my constants. I'm going to change shapes also. You don't have to if you don't want to. All right, so I've got my x squared values, my terms. I only have one, so I'm just going to copy it. Nothing to go with it. All right, I've got my orange x terms. I've got plus 5 plus 6, so that makes 11 x's. And now I'm going to do my constants. Plus 20 minus 17, that gives me 3. Alright, jot down this one. We'll do one more together. Alright, I'm going to put a box, here's my x squared value. I'm going to put it with this x value. Okay. And as I look across, I have no x values. I only have x squareds, but I have no x's, no y's. All I have left is constants. So I'm going to do this constant, this constant, and this constant. All right, let's see. x squared. How many x squareds is that? Good. That's 1x squared plus 2 more x squareds gives me 
3x squared. And then I've got 3 plus 4 is 7. And 7 minus 7 is 0. So I can choose to do this if I'd like. Or you can leave off the 0 altogether. Because any number plus 0 is itself. So either one of these answers would be counted correct. All right, pause the video. Jot these down. Try them on your own and then come on back and I'll go over the answers. All right, I'm going to skip the shapes and the colors. I'm just going to go right for the answers. I've got some x values and if I put those together I get 2x and I'm going to put my y values together and get 6y. So that's my final answer. For this one, put together the x squared terms and the x terms and you get 12x squared and 14x. Okay, and then this last one, I'm going to put together all my x values and I get 5x. If I put together all my constants, I get nothing. So I'm not going to put anything at all. My final answer is just 5x. Now if you put 5x plus 0, you can also count that correct. We're going to do more practice problems in class. See you soon.